Ann, you're on. I'm here. Okay. All right. So it sounds like um, sounds like Jen, Lori, and Jessica. Oh, and, and Senator Brewster, are you on? Yes. Was that did I hear a yes? <laughs> All right, well, I think we have a quorum, uh, but um, uh, Jen, Lori, and Jessica, any of the three you are on, just please acknowledge. Okay, well, okay, we'll, uh, we'll start the meeting and hopefully they can join. Michelle, uh, if uh, Jen doesn't join, you may have to give the um, Performance and Oversight Committee report. Okay, so uh, with that, I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, although we, I guess we can't really do a Pledge of Allegiance under these circumstances, so I just take this moment to acknowledge the uh, spirit of our country in this uh, really unheard of times, the way people are stepping up for it to each other, um, for each other. It's just, it's just amazing. And uh, and our hats are off to our um, first responders and our frontline workers, and of course all the people who we probably normally just take take for granted that are uh, continuing to show up to work and to make sure that at least those businesses that are essential businesses and allowed to remain open have continued to come in to serve. And then of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our own uh, bus drivers, mechanics, police, all the others who are serving the uh, Port Authority. So we thank you. And, uh, and then I think also for a moment of silence, let's use the moment of silence in memory of those who've perished as a result of uh, the uh, virus that has hit this country. Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll move on to the report of our executive director. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, members. Uh, and everybody listening back at home or wherever you are dialing in from today. Thank you for attending our first virtual board meeting and I hope everyone is uh, doing well in this very strange, unusual and trying times. To kick things off, I'd like to have a moment of silence and reflection for the, uh, the courageous public transit employees across this country who have died as a result of this pandemic, those at home recovering, and those across the country who are still coming to work day to day despite the risks. Uh, their sacrifices are heroic and inspiring. So a second moment of silence, please. Thank you. Now it's no surprise that the COVID-19 pandemic has taken us all and turned our worlds upside down. Uh, and uh, since last February, when we dusted off and updated our pandemic plan, formed a working group. I can't believe how much time has passed. Uh, somehow the past six weeks have been three years at the same time. We didn't know when we dusted off that plan that we would be dealing with a global catastrophe that would change not just our industry, but our economy, our country, and our world. Since then, we've been working very closely with our union leadership to keep our employees and our riders safe and as healthy as any transit agency can. We've taken aggressive measures to curb the spread of the virus. We are disinfecting our vehicles every 24 hours uh, and more often if we know someone has been exposed. We've implemented rear door boarding which uh, eliminates the congregating at the front of the bus. There are fewer places where people get hung up going through, through the rear doors. We place limits on the number of passengers to maintain appropriate social distancing. And most recently, we've asked our riders to cover their face when they are out on our vehicles. We understand some people cannot wear masks because of medical conditions, some folks can't get to them. But please, if you're on that essential trip, you are covering your face when you get to your destination, just use that covering on the bus for everybody's health and safety. The impact of this crisis is being felt around the world 
And here at Port Authority, we have not been immune to the devastating effects. Our lives have been disrupted, both as a transit patrons and as a transit professional. A trip to the store is not just a trip to the store anymore. Interactions with neighbors are strange, cautious, and more often distant across property lines, across streets. Even meeting with coworkers is very different than it was just a few months ago. And it does seem like there's light at the end of the tunnel, but a lot of questions remain. How long will this go on? When will it be safe? Will people feel safe to take transit? And are we doing everything we can to make sure employees and passengers have that sense of safety and security? What's the best way to protect your family and your loved ones as you're going through this? We don't have a lot of answers, but we will work on all of this together. Uh, financially, as we prepare for our next year's budget cycle, uh, the financial uncertainties are, are they're daunting. Ridership has plummeted, revenue has taken a, a big drop as well on our fair revenue. Our partners on the state, local and federal level are also seeing changes to their budgets, which will have impact in outlying financial years. Uh, since the 1st of March, we're about 15 million down in passenger revenues alone, and that's a significant hole in our budget. We're spending nearly million dollars a month on disinfection and contamination efforts. We don't know how long that will continue. And this million is on a smaller footprint of service. As we add more buses and service back, that dollar amount will increase. We are incredibly thankful for the ability to be able to draw down from about $140 million on the CARES Act, which will help us maintain our workforce, continue to serving our neighbors, and make purchases from the local small vendors who really rely on us in these times. I'd like to take a moment to thank Senators Casey and Toomey and Representatives Doyle and Lamb and Reschenthaler for their support. This commitment to public transit is, uh, is wonderful and should be applauded. Uh, amid all of this, despite the virus, despite the warnings to stay inside, and the, despite the obstacles, 20% of our riders, those who work at hospital and grocery stores and other life-saving businesses, and those who get us our services to bring us food and medicine and check on loved ones, that 20% has stayed with us, and we're very grateful for this. We're a little leaner. Service isn't running quite as frequently. Uh, and some of us are working 80 hours a week. I think uh, Mike Setra does that every single day. But we're still here. We've been here 160 years. We're here now, and we'll be with you as we define what transportation looks like in the future. In the best of times, public transit allows for freedom, independence, and accessibility. In the worst of times, we are an essential service whose employees deserve the same recognition as police officers, firefighters, and others on the front lines. These are among the heroes. Uh, we've also had two people step into new roles right now. We have Mike Heidkamp as our chief operating officer and Don Rivetti as our chief maintenance officer. They've taken on these new responsibilities uh, in the middle of a pandemic, which is a trying enough time, uh, and they have shined in their roles, providing us this kind of leadership that will continue to give us this national presence, and it's the best that we can do for our employees. I am I'm thrilled that the best for them is also the best for the agency, and I couldn't be proud of every member of our team. I, Collectively, we will do everything in our power to continue serving our community and to emerge even stronger than before. It's our immediate challenge, and our focus is on this for the foreseeable future. As things open up and shift, this is still our challenge. Um, we're going to have to make some serious decisions in the future. We might delay projects. We might have to move things around. Uh, but we will not toss aside our organizational goals and our missions as we address this crisis. Those goals and this mission to make life happen in Allegheny County in this region will help get us through these difficult times as we grow, rebuild, and position ourselves for this post-COVID reality. Uh, I was brought here to give our region the transit that we deserve, and the coronavirus might tweak what this looks like, but it's not going to change that. We will continue to be focused on an excellent customer experience. Whether you drive and clean our buses, whether you use our buses, whether you apply to work with us, or whether you do business with us, we are going to continue to be that excellent experience. COVID is not going to stop this. I, Mr. Chair, that uh, concludes my remarks, unless there are any questions. Are there any questions? I just want to thank you and your team. You've done an incredible job under these circumstances. And of course, we want to keep the safety, health, and welfare of our employees and passengers at the top of the agenda. And you've done an yes. amazing job of doing that. So thank you. Amazing team. They make it easy. <laughs> Okay, so with that, we'll move on to approval of the minutes of the February 28th meeting. Stephanie, will you make that motion? Make a motion that we move um, to approve the minutes for the February 28th, 2020 um, meeting. John, can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Are any opposed? Okay, that carries. And with that, we're gonna move on to the report of the Performance and Oversight Committee. Um, I guess, Michelle, you'll, you'll handle that then. Okay, great. All right, can you hear me okay, Mr. Chair? All right, good morning, everyone. The Performance and Oversight Committee met last week and I have seven resolutions for your consideration this morning. The committee first reviewed 10 procurement items and determined the bids to be in accordance with the authority's procurement policies and procedures. The price is fair and reasonable, the bidders to be responsible, and the bids responsive. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends for award the 10 items listed in the resolution for the total amount of approximately $17.5 million. Austin, will you make that motion? So moved. Jessica, can you second it? Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. The next three resolutions are in result of the authorities placing projects on hold and funds now being released due to the dismissed truckers litigation. The authority wishes to extend and amend agreements to provide general architecture and engineering contract services with Gannett Fleming Incorporated and AECOM Technical Services Incorporated. Agreements are for an initial term of four years through June 30th, 2021, and a total not to exceed amount of $6 million, with an option to extend the agreements up to one additional year at the authority's sole discretion. To continue the completion of services on current and future projects, the Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the term of the agreements through June 30th, 2021, $1,750,000 to ensure adequate funding for services be maintained. All members, I respectfully request the Board of Jessica, will you make that resolution? Name of that motion? So moved. Ann, can you second that? I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. The next resolution seeks authorization to extend and amend agreements with CDM Smith Incorporated and Whitman, Ricard, and Associates LLP to provide architectural design services for transit passenger facilities and general building design. Agreements were for an additional, an initial term of four years through September 30th, 2020, and a total not to exceed amount of $6 million, with the option to extend the agreements up to one additional year at the authority's sole discretion. To continue the completion of services on current and future projects, the Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the term of the agreements through September 30th, 2021, and to increase the total not to exceed amount of the agreements to $1,500,000. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board to approve this resolution. Ann, will you make that motion? So moved. Mayor Brewster, would you second it? I thought I had him on. John, will you second that? Yes. yes. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The next resolution seeks authorization to extend an agreement with Hatch Consultants Incorporated to perform environmental contract services. The agreement was for an initial term of three years through June 30th, 2020 and a total not to exceed amount of up to $600,000 with the option to extend the agreement up to two additional years at the authority's sole discretion. To continue the completion of the services on current and future projects, the Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the agreements through June 30th, 2021 with no increase in the previously authorized not to exceed amount of the agreement. Resolution. Stephanie, will you make that motion? So moved. Uh, Jessica, would you second that? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. 
The next resolution mm -hmm. seeks authorization to extend and amend agreement with the Willis Towers Watson US LLC to provide employee benefit services. The agreement awarded in July 2015 was for an initial three year term for a total not to exceed amount of $1 million. In April 2018, the board authorized the authority to extend the term of agreements until July 30th, 2020, and to increase the previously authorized total not to exceed amount for the agreement to $1,700,000. In order to provide continuance benefit services during the period that the authority is seeking proposals for health insurance providers, and during the upcoming collective bargaining negotiations with two of the authority's labor unions, the Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the term of the agreement for an additional five months, increasing the total not to exceed amount by $240,000. Austin, can you make that motion? So moved. Uh, John, can you second it? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. The next resolution seeks authorization to enter into an agreement for facility management services at the South Hills Village parking garage. The authority proposes to engage a single contractor to provide general management and operation services with the option to provide new equipment for a parking access revenue control system. In order to thank qualified firms to perform the services, a request for proposals was prepared and publicly advertised. After four proposals were received and evaluated, the proposal submitted by Parkway Corporation was determined to be the highest rated proposal for the performance of services. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends entering into an agreement with Parkway Corporation in a total not to exceed amount of $672,000 to be allocated on an as needed basis through task specific work orders for an initial three year period with the option to extend the term of the agreement up to two additional years at the sole discretion of the authority. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. Ann, will you make that motion? So moved. John, can you second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. The final resolution I have for you this morning seeks authorization to extend and amend an agreement with Brinks US to provide armored car and cash management services. The authority entered into an agreement with Brinks in January 2017 for an initial three year term and a total not to exceed amount of $3,500,000. The agreement also contains two additional option years to be exercised by the authority in its sole discretion. To date, the services performed by Brinks have been satisfactory. So therefore, the Performance Oversight Committee recommends extending the term of the agreement to May 4th, 2021, and to increase the total not to exceed amount of the agreement by $768,000. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board to approve this resolution. Where's Jeff? Jeff is muted. No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can hear you now. Uh, Austin, can you make that motion? Yes, so moved. Stephanie, we second it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. That concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Michelle and that will move on to report if you have any from uh, planning and stakeholder committee John Tate. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. The planning and stakeholders relations committee did not meet this month due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, I would like to provide the board with an update on recent community outreach efforts. ACTC and uh, the committee for accessible transportation. The authority has been communicating regularly with both uh, the Allegheny County Transit Council and the Committee for Accessible Transportation this crisis, including share, sharing a document that outlines steps taken over the past several weeks to address the pandemic. Similarly, Amplis shared a document outlining 
uh, steps that they are taking. The authority hosted a conference call on April 13th to update the ACTC members on Port Authority operations during the crisis. I have personally participated in the call that was very informative discussion. Philip St. Pierre, Director of Service Planning and Scheduling, provided an update on service changes that have been implemented in addition to prevention and precautionary measures the Port Authority has taken. We are planning to a similar conference call with the CAP Committee next week and will continue to provide both groups with updates as they become available. I'd like to address access. Access as a transit ridership is significantly down to the pandemic. Um, access has been uh, using capacity and system to help support the community. With uh, recently approved funding uh, from the Pittsburgh Foundation through the United Way, access is delivering meals to neighborhoods in need in Hazelwood, Tarentum, Natrona Heights, and West Deer, delivering medical supplies to small community-based agencies and, and calling riders for wellness checks, 200 of whom are over the age of 90. And uh, access employees have called over a thousand riders who live alone to check in. The average age of these riders is 84 years. This is a, an innovative way to keep access carriers up and running, ensure drivers are working, and help those who otherwise have no means to acquire meals, groceries, and other critical supplies. In closing, I, I, I want to comment, uh, commend Port Authority leadership for acting quickly and adapting to the current situation to ensure the safety of our riders and our employees. I'm very proud of the work that we are doing. I know that it is not easy, but there are many people like myself who depend on transit. And I'm very pleased that we are continuing to provide this life-sustaining service. That concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, John. Are there any questions for John? Okay, then with that, we'll move on to the report of the Finance Committee from Anna Gork, our Chair. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. The Finance Committee met on Thursday, April 16th. One resolution was presented to the committee seeking authorization to appoint a new record keeper for Port Authority of Allegheny County's 457B and 401A defined contribution program. Port Authority seeks to authorize the selection of a new record keeper for its defined contribution program for participating non-represented International Brotherhood of Electric Workers and Port Authority Transit Police Association represented employees. The record keeper will oversee contributions made to the 457B and 401A plans that make up the program. Following issuance of a request for proposals, Port Authority convened a staff committee with support from its plan chief investment officers and benefits council to evaluate the proposals received. The committee conducted evaluations and interviews of the shortlisted firms and determined that the proposal submitted by ICMARC Retirement Services was the highest rated. It should be noted that ICMARC is also the current record keeper for the ATU Local 85 Defined Contribution Program and that no Port Authority funds are utilized to pay for record keeping services. This resolution would authorize Port Authority to enter into an agreement with ICMARC to serve as record keeper for the defined contribution program. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. Michelle, will you make that motion? Stephanie, will you second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Chief Financial Officer Peter Shank then reported on both the February and March financial statements. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, operating income was above budget by $630,780 for the month of February due to higher advertising and interest income. Total expenses through February were $21.1 million under budget. Total subsidies were $10 million above budget due to higher state operating assistance. Mr. Shank reported that for the month of March, operating income was below budget by 1.49 million. He reported that passenger revenues for the first week of April were down over 90% due to COVID-19's adverse impact, 
which will be reflected in the April financial statements. Total expenses for the month of March were $23 million under budget. Total subsidies continue to be un above budget by over $10 million, but this will normalize by fiscal year end. That concludes my report. Are there any questions for Ann? Okay, thank you, Ann. Well, with that, um, there is, is there any new business? Okay, there's no public comment. Our next regular meeting, which I hope is going to be face to face, even if we're socially distant, uh, is uh, May 29th. Um, I wish everybody that uh, they be safe and stay healthy, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. That the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, everyone. Care. Thank you, everyone.